to the meeting point on desert television. I am Michael Ikobo. The meeting point is a program designed to showcase issues, advance discussions on how we could better the society. And today we are looking at the topic, the 2023 elections, the need for mindset reorientation. To do justice to this discussion, we have in the studio two erudite journalists who have carved niches in their career. We have uh, Comrade Vitor Soroku, the Bureau Chief of Daily Trust in Delta State. Comrade Soroku, you are welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Please. We also have in the studio the Bureau Chief for Sun Newspapers in Delta State, Comrade Paul Osui. Paul Osui, you are welcome. It's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much. There's no doubt that um, the process leading to selecting leaders that will fly the flag of their party in the forthcoming election, precisely 2023, has taken center stage in the discussion across the country. And um, why this is going on? The electorates are also watching how the pen, where the panel will swing to. Party faithful are committed to delivering the candidate of their party, while the political leaders are jostling to see who and who will be the best to represent their party. While this is going on, we must begin to look at how we can select credible leaders that will represent us at the various level so that the true dividend of democracy will be delivered to the people. That is the reason why we are looking at how we can reorient the mindset of our people towards knowing what to do in this critical time. Comrade Soroku, today we are looking at this topic, mindset of towards the 2023 election. How will you describe an average Nigerian when it comes to electionary process? Yes, I think we need to break down that word mindset and reorientation uh, in lieu of 2023 elections so that the viewer will have a better grip of what we are discussing. Mindset is like saying the way of reasoning, the way of doing things applicable to a society. You know? And um, if we talk about how do we do things as Nigerians, how do we do things as Deltans, you begin to understand why this uh, discussion is not just topical, but very timely. Now, talking about the mindset of Nigerians towards 2023, we have always known that the mindset of the average Nigerian towards election <coughs> is like for them a time of harvest, a time of bargain a time of bazaar, a time to take back from these politicians, you know. And ordinarily it should have been a time of re-evaluation, reassessment, a time to carefully understudy, stock taking, time of audit, a time of stewardship uh, and giving of account to the electorate, to the constituents. A time that politicians that are in position of um, public trust should be able to come and say, this is my still worship. This is what I'm able to do on the basis of the public trust and mandate that was reposed on me. Unfortunately, it is not what the average Nigerian asked for during election. What we look at is pecuniary, materialistic, stomach infrastructure, how we think we can deal with uh, immediate gains 
And at the end of the day, you discover that you have again mortgaged another four years, if not eight years. So it becomes a vicious circle whereby you, you, you sell off your mandate, your power, civic power, as an electorate to somebody you have not carefully looked at to know whether that person can deliver on public assignment. If that person can uphold public trust, if that person is such that you can depend on to be a voice, a credible representation, a representative <coughs> for the larger constituency. So, 2023, mindset, there is need for a reorientation, okay. beginning from the communities, okay. the family okay. we'll, setting we'll, the we'll communities. Get we'll, get, <coughs> we'll, get, we'll get there. So that by the time we get there, you now begin to break down who are who supposed to change their orientation and the way you think that is the best way to, to change. Um, Osui, you, ha you have had um, your colleague, Comrade um, Soroku, how he has been able to tell us his own perspective of uh, Nigerians, particularly when it comes to election. From your own view, how would you describe a Nigerian during, before, during, and uh, after election? The way they reason, the way they approach political um, period, how do you describe in Nigeria? Well, <clears throat> my description of an average Nigeria in terms of election is not in any way different from what Mr. Uh, Soroku has uh, said. I say so because coming to election, Nigerians, the electorate, the voters, sometimes they are very, very enthusiastic. That enthusiasm is not because they are really interested in putting in place a credible leadership. The enthusiasm stems from the fact that what are they going to get from the electionary period. So it's a time for them to reap. It's a time for them to say, let me have my share of the national cake or the state cake as the case may be. And it's a very, very wrong way, a wrong process of electing our leaders. If you look at it, if you look at our political journey since 1999, apart from 1999 when every, everything, the, there was still that fear of military takeover, the, the participation wasn't that much. But subsequent years, 2003, 2007, you see Nigerians are coming out in the electionary process, maybe a year, a year or a year or six months to election to participate not truly to have a credible leadership, but for their pecuniary benefits. What do I get? What do you have for me? You want my vote, so what do you have for me? So this mindset of Nigerians towards election, we need to unbundle it. A whole lot of unbundling needs to be done so that heading towards 2023, we will not continue to make another mistake of electing a leadership will wait for another four years to, ch to, to change it. No, because once you have mortgaged your conscience, this 2023, you don't have a say. If you want to criticize a government, you just criticize for criticizing sake. But you don't really deep within you. You feel that you have had your share, no matter how little it may be, you have had your share of what you are supposed to benefit in four years, which is very, very minute compared to what you're supposed to get if you were to elect somebody with integrity, somebody with the know-how, somebody with the intellect to turn this around, somebody with the capacity to have a long-term plan for you, not for you alone, but for your generations of born. So there is a lot to be done to embody this mindset of Nigerians. Okay, yeah. when, when looking at the political process um, holistically, we have so many stakeholders involved. First, um, the po political party platform is one major uh, key player in decision making when it comes to election, because that is where the candidates that will represent the various political parties emerges. Then you look at um, the, within the political uh, party circle, you look at the political leaders who take major decisions to, or, or, uh, on who should represent them. Mm -hmm. 
then when you go down the the electorate themselves, people have said before now that the power belongs to the electorate. But how far have we been able to use this power is another issue that is bothering them Nigerians. But as, as we progress, we we'll also look at it. From your perspective, the issue of uh, party in their orientation of choosing who represent them, what do you think has gone wrong? Because most times after, after primaries, you see uh, court cases coming up here and there, so many people going to court to challenge the outcome of the primaries because they, they, they felt that um, the process was not free and fair. How, how do you look at um, the, the political parties in terms of choosing the candidates that represent them? Okay, uh, the political parties, you see there's a culture in this country or there's a culture in our society, the culture of money bags. You know, um, political parties, what they look out for in picking candidates, one of the criteria that they look at is, does he have money? Can he fund the electionary campaign? So for them, money is fundamental, very principal. So, and that is why once the whistle is blown, they begin to shop for uh, aspirants or they want to, to uh, lure, as, uh, lure money bags into the contest because Nigeria is known for money politics. They know that it is like the hen and the corn. The electorates are the hen. The money bag carries the bag of corn. As long as you throw corn at the hen, they will come for you. It's just like also the man that has the palm front and the goat. The electorate is regarded as the good. As long as you have the palm front, they will come after you. So you discover that political parties, they bait money bags. They bait people with financial means and stature. They go after governors, people that are already in offices. What happened in those states is a clear indication. How can somebody leave one party A in less than a week? He, he, he has cross-carpeted to party B, and he retains or he becomes the candidate of that party. Talking about the governor, I'm talking about the, the last election. From party A, you were governor. Less than one week, you have they come from that party A to party B, and then you became, you were given the ticket. That is because the parties believe that you have the resources, you, you command all it takes, you know, to execute, to prosecute the election. So there is nothing as you were like serious party ideology. And that is why if you look at it today, uh, party membership, um, consideration for giving the, the, the ticket of the party, is not always uh, uh, dictated by party ideology or manifesto. It, it is dictated by the stature, the, the substance, and the means of the persons on the platform of that party. So, yes, Roku has said that uh, what influenced the choice of candidate by political parties is based on the Majorly. how 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 rich you are, how financially strong you are to be able to you know foot the bill of that political party. Um, policy. This money politics. Do you think it has helped Nigeria's democracy to grow, or it has made it? Because most times we see some people who may not even have the enough resources to carry out their campaign, going to borrow money from banks. Eventually, if they, if they, they fail to win, they are bankrupt. Do you think 
money policies will help our democracy to thrive and deliver the needed uh, development? Uh, money politics, as it were, can never and will never help to sustain our democracy and develop Nigeria as a country. I say so because it's like somebody who is investing his money, his hard-earned money, is investing it in one business, one form of trade or the other. The person expects to get a return for his investment. So anybody who has come to seek political office and is bringing money as its own selling point has an agenda to loot the state. Because when he gets there, he's going to recoup his money, recover his money, which he has invested ab initio in terms of uh, campaigns and all that, in terms of winning the delegates, particularly for the primaries. And that also brings me to the issue of not just the money alone, the kind of leadership we have in the political parties. You hear most of them say, leader said, leader said, leader said. Who is this leader? We have not, as members of political parties, as delegates for primary elections, we have not been able to interrogate that leader. That this person you are asking us to queue behind, does he have the capacity to lead us? Even if our party is popular in a certain environment. But this person, if we queue behind him at the primary level and he goes ahead to win the general election, will he turn this around for the common man? Those are the questions we need to ask. Like also taking me, it's also, uh, uh, also mentioned issue of Edo State. It is not just one political party that is involved. All the parties, the two major parties are involved. You see, if you watch what is happening in Nigeria now, the ruling party at the center keep shopping from state to state where there are opposition governors. They keep winning the opposition governors to their side because it, they feel that these people have the money to prosecute election, elections. Also in that same Edo state, when the former governor, the immediate past governor, was declared winner by the AP court way back in 2008, 2009, and there was an election in 2011, all the people that were with him in opposition while in court, all those people who contested in the 20, 2007 election under the platform of his party, they were the same people that were aspiring again now for 2011. Do you know what he did? He has to go recruit people from the other party. The people were already holding senatorial positions, House of Fair positions, House of Assembly positions. And he told his party members that these are the people that have the money to prosecute the election. He dumped those people who were with him in the trenches and recruited money bags. And it's a big problem, really, really big problem for our electoral system. And will, uh, you know, that has attributed to the underdevelopment we have seen in Nigeria? Of course. Okay. Of course. So in, in moving forward, before now, when we were growing up, we, we used to hear that um, this particular political party have this ideology. And anybody that believes in such ideology will key into that political party because that is where he feels that his dreams of... Um, becoming either a, a leader of that party or having a leader that will deliver on what he believes in, he will now keep, he, uh, enter that political party. But today, we don't see it again. What we are seeing today is uh, people believing in, in, in uh, individuals. Since policy is here, that is who I will belong to. When are we going to have the courage to break this servant and uh, leader followership in, 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 uh, in Nigeria politics? Where one leader, when he speaks, this is where we are going. This is where our party is going. Nobody else challenges it. They will queue in and follow, you know, blindly. When do you think Nigeria will be mature enough to begin to challenge such instruction coming from so-called political leaders? <coughs> See, I, I think we will get there. We will get there. We started from somewhere. Because the ideology you are talking about now, you look at the post-independence era. We had parties with ideologies. And from history, what we learned was that for you to belong to a member of a political party, you are financially committed to the party. You pay dues. And from those dues, they fund the primaries of, of, of political parties. They fund whatever the party is undertaking financially to make it stable as a political party. But it is not like that today. You see, every, a, a, a party, party will bring up 
uh, it register and tell you that we have so and so, so outrageous number of members. And you, with that kind of membership, you feel that the party should collect dues and should be able to fund it, fund itself, fund its activities. But it is not like that these days. What we have is that there is a money back somewhere. There is one particular man somewhere within the world, within a unit of a political party that is sponsored, that is responsible for the meeting of the political party at the unit level, at the world level, sometimes at the local government level, sometimes at the state level, will be responsible for each meeting that they under the logistics of each meeting. And at the end, this same person, he has an agenda. And his agenda is to contest election. So with all those funding of the political party, when it comes to primaries, the leaders of that party will tell you that this man has been here building this party with his funds. Without even bringing other issues to the table for us to debate, for us to extray his character, whether he has integrity, whether he has the capacity, whether he's even qualified academically, we push that to the back corner. I said because he has been responsible for funding of this party, he should be given a chance. And uh, the, everybody goes to the field and said, leader has said so. But I believe that there will certainly be a gradual change. We may not, we may not experience a revolution okay. in terms of this change. It's going to be gradual. So, uh, Comrade Sudoku, will you um, say now that uh, because of um, the burden the political parties placed on certain individuals, who want to aspire for one political office or the other has contributed to the entrenchment of corruption in our system? Yeah, not just corruption, mediocrity. Um, fraud. Forgery. You see, in 1999, you remember the Salit Sugate uh, saga? Yeah. The Evan Ewenem saga. Um, yeah, there are so many of them. Certificate forgery. Now, like he rightly said, there is a need for people, political parties, to do proper screening of people that you saddle with leadership responsibilities. Only recently in Bayesa, a political party won an election. And on the eve of the swearing in, yes. <laughs> a fraud, a impropriety was in respect of the, uh, if, if, if particulars, of the particulars of the deputy yeah. governorship elect, uh, deputy governor elect. Not because the election has been concluded. Yeah. concluded. They, they allowed them were even there on, on party ground. Let them understand to, how to march. Have you, what, 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 they were practicing. So, so when, when they, they got the court <laughs> judgment. Imagine somebody has gone through the crucibles of the political party screening and all that. That means they don't truly screen aspirants that are brought on the platform of the political parties. And I think that is where the political party need to put their acts together. Like Osui said, it's not enough for money bags to come hijack the polity. There's a need for political parties to owe it as a responsibility to the country. To midwife credible leaders. Leaders that will become mentors, models, leaders that are visionary. Leaders that will take this country to Eldorado, not leaders that will continue to orchestrate crisis, set back the country, keep us stagnant. And that is because everything, all of the, 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 the dictate to the selection of who should fly the party flag begins and end with money. So money becomes the most important consideration. If we take leave of that and begin to look, of, look at character, look at uh, integrity, good name, antecedent, 
service oriented issue. Is the person people minded? What has been his antecedent? Go back to the family, go back to this uh, community he's coming from. Then we begin to have the kind of leadership that we deserve. I can always tell you, every society deserves the leadership it has. So there's so much that the political parties need and ought to do to give us leaders at all tiers of government, all the strata, all arms of government, not just the executive, <coughs> men that are credible. Even an appointment. Even an appointment. Everything had to be scrutinized, vetted. I'm not saying that uh, it, 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 it's not possible for anybody to be perfect. Okay? But somebody you will pass through the eyes of the law, and it comes out clean. You pass through the eyes of morality, it comes out clean. You pass through the eyes of public service, it comes out clean. You discover that why there is so much corruption, so much looting, is that uh, is so that aspirants can have enough what financial watches to prosecute the next election. Now, if political parties begin to look at how come you had your, uh, how did you come about your wealth? I think uh, yeah, 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 in the social media, in, in the media, you've been seeing where some people are coming to say how I made my first million, how I made my first billion. Come and tell us. In, in developed climes, if you are a billionaire, you are a clean billionaire. Because the system in place will ensure that you pass through legitimate means to become a billionaire. Not through ritual and occultism. Not through looting. And then we we'll begin to worship you as a hero for being a ritualist or for being a looter of our common patrimony, the common wealth of the country. Okay, so I think um, there is this saying that um, if there is nobody to take bribe, um, the, 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 there, is no, there will be tendency for somebody mm -hmm. to give. That is why I told you that. The electorates, <coughs> you understand? So the that, mindset that, has that, been... That is where I'm going now. The electorates have so much belief that when it is electionary period, it is time for harvest, like you rightly said. And most of these electorates will not be part of those who will choose the candidates that represent the various political parties. Don't you think more work needed to be done within the electorate level so that their mindset will begin to change towards how they approach the kind of period we are, we are approaching now? Osui, so what do you think that we need to do to enable the electorate to begin to take their take center stage in making decisions on who represent them? If your party has chosen a candidate that is not credible, that is not worthy, that doesn't have capacity, and the other political party um, is, is, is presenting a candidate that has capacity and credibility, why not we vote the, that person rather than voting our political party? What is, do, you, do you have to say concerning the electorate? Well, <clears throat> it is the duty of every stakeholder in the political process to go about this enlightenment about mindset on Bodney in terms of our political development. I say this because uh, the old woman in the village, the old man in those communities, way back, way back when we were smaller, there, there was this name in, a, in, a, in old Bende, Ogbemudia, Aneni. What the old woman will tell you that which party is Obemudia? Irrespective of who is representing that party at that particular election, because Obemudia is associated with that party, the old woman will go and cast her foot for that party. Because Obemudia did well as a governor. So that name, that reputation which he built, is now going with those that are following him. But we are afraid particularly those, the illiterates, I'm sorry to use that word, those of, those of us 
way back in the villages, in the communities, we can't actually assess our candidates, but we assess the leaders who brought them, which is very wrong. And that is why I said it is responsibility of every stakeholder, the media, the civil society, the political parties themselves. No, the political parties may not want to do that because by doing so, they are, they are, they are, they are removing the authority they have and giving back to the electorates. So they may not want to even carry out enlightenment process that will enable them vote the candidate that have the capacity. So yes. leave the political party out. In fact, I wanted to say that is where a program like this come handy. The need to give reorientation to the mindset of particularly of the elect electorate and the grassroots. There is need for mindset re-evaluation reorientation, renewal. Renewal because even the informed act as if they are uninformed. Just because of stomach infrastructure. So, Osi, so, how, how do you discourage? Osi was speaking before, okay. before he caught it. Let's, let's get, get back to him so that I can finish. I know he has a line of thought. He want to yeah. he want the, the viewers, viewers to understand. Then, he's talking about... Um, Stomach infrastructure, which yes. you have also alluded to, mm -hmm. that they look at the leaders to take decisions. Not because um, the, the candidate, the leaders are, are projecting we do well, but because of what they want to gain. We make an instant with um, Ogomodia. When Ogomodia was in power, he did well, and that is why our fathers in the village could say, okay, who is Ogomodia? In those days, when we were young, I went to came to my village. You understand? During his campaign. But now, the, the, the candidates we are having now, even to the level of uh, uh, House of Assembly, they don't come to villages again to do campaign. They centralize it at the, at the local government headquarters. How would the, my mother in the village know a candidate that would be good rather than <coughs> depending on the, on the political leaders from my village to tell her, this is where we are because of party, party line? That, that's, that's, that's what uh, I was talking about the role of the media, the role of the civil society in all of this. Uh, we all need to make this sacrifice. I say so because it is, the, it is our responsibility now to tell the electorate ahead of 2023 that we need to assess our candidates. Not somebody, you know, because of social media, because of technology. You feel that you do a campaign at the local government headquarters and you feel that every community has been captured. Every, everyone in the grassroots has assessed you as a person. No, you have denied people the opportunity to interrogate you by not meeting with them. Because when they interrogate you, they know if you have the capacity. They will decipher if you have integrity. Uh, let's just leave uh, academic qualification out of it now. Because those things you need to dig deep for you to know if somebody is academically qualified. You need to dig deep for you to know if somebody is actually what he claims to be academically. Like the cases you cited, the, the various uh, scandals at the earlier part of uh, Nigeria's uh, return to democracy. People were already sworn in into, into offices before it was discovered that the forged certificates... Someone was already a speaker. <laughs> the forged certificates. So it's good. That one will take a long time. But... With that interrogation, you need to meet people. And uh, for me, for me, I would like to say that for every candidate, every candidate who is prepared for election, you should be prepared to reach the grassroots. Let the people assess you one on one, that you can deliver, that you are not telling us lies because your word is your bond. Let they, let them hold you by your word. You can't come to my word. A campaign, you will do road, you will do this, and you don't. You didn't go to uh, maybe what what uh, AB to tell them you will do that. So, if at the end of the day you win the election, you didn't promise uh, what AB that you are going to do anything for them, so they have they have nothing to hold, hold you. So, I would say, let us take the message down to the grassroots on the need for each and every candidate to be assessed, to be interrogated. Given the opportunity. Okay. So, so um, Soroku, just um, recently, 
there was an election in Anambra State. And we gathered that some set of individuals who didn't accept the money that was given to them to sway their votes. The election that just um, 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 gave um, Charles Soludo the mandate to take over from Obiano. And some of the candidate, uh, electorates there vehemently refused to accept the money given to them. Not because they, they, were, they, were, hung, not because they were not hungry, but because I want to believe that they, they, they have integrity and they have assessed the political parties and their candidates and discovered that a particular candidate will be better than the other one. That was why those people rejected the money. What lesson can we draw from that in moving forward, particularly the electorates who will be voting in the next election in 2023? What lesson do you think we can draw from that? Yes, one of the lessons, one of the lessons we need to draw from that is that there is the need for us or for the political parties to present credible candidates. The man that eventually emerged in that election, Professor Chukuma Soludo, became a household name. You know, his antecedents, his public service uh, record, you know. So people knew him. Both the outgoing governor, the, his party, the Abga, you know, were able to produce a winsome candidate that the people, it, it, became, it became difficult to sway the people against the Abga candidate. So it, it wasn't an issue of money. Not that all of them rejected money. If you watch on social media, people were giving money. I'm particular about those who rejected. You understand? People, after collecting money, still went to vote for the candidate of their choice. So some people may be hungry, collect money, but they still have a conscience, and they did what their conscience told them. And I think that is what we need in our political system. So, uh, Paul Osi, in, in trying to summarize, what will be your message to the electorates as we approach the 2023 election? Uh, my message is all about sacrifice. That rather than say your conscience because of hunger, you can as well experience hunger for just some time. Because like it's written in the Bible, for those of us who are very vast in the Bible, that uh, the suffering endured for a night, but light comment in the day, I don't know how to put it. That is my message so the, for them. The, the most sacrifice. The most sacrifice. And uh, sure that the right candidate is voted for. Yes. I want to thank you for making it to this, to this program today. Comrade Soroku, thank you. Paul Osi, I see you for having me. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. Thank the you. program has been uh, the meeting point, and the topic is um, 2023 elections, the need for mindset orientation. They have equally um, told the electorates on the need to remain steadfast, ensure that um, your vote counts, Make sure that the candidate that you are voting for has the capacity, the capability, the, the vision, the desire to transform the society before you can uh, decide to pick them with such a candidate. I am Michael Ikobo. Thank you for being with us today.